started in our uh, committee meetings. <clears throat> we have seven first readings, no second, third, or pending. And we're going to move into finance. Jim? We will open our finance committee meeting at, wow, 6 o'clock. <laughs> and our first order of business is Resolution 21R77. A resolution authorizing New Franklin to enter into agreements with Cornerstone Benefit Services and Medical Mutual for New Franklin's health insurance plan and Delta for dental insurance and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. Thank you. Just go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, I mean, this is a culmination of uh, the process that uh, uh, um, started in June, and, and I'm going to start by um, acknowledging uh, Mr. Cotts and Mr. Jones and Mr. Fetterman who uh, sponsored and introduced legislation to uh, ask us to go out to bids for the health insurance. I mean, we've been on uh, self-insured uh, program uh, reference-based pricing uh, for a couple of years, and it was it, it did save us money. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Thank you. It did save us money, and uh, we were able to... Uh, but, it, but uh, as time went on, there was uh, significant problems relative to access to providers. Um, our health care committee um, was willing to go another year with it while we explored other options. Um, but council and the three members I mentioned suggested that we get bids. And so we did. And uh, it was good advice. Um, and what uh, eventually we looked at self-insured reference base, we looked at self-insured with the network, we looked at fully insured. We didn't expect to come back with a recommendation. Well, I didn't expect uh, the fully insured to be an attractive option. It turned out it was. And the uh, health care committee met and reviewed all of those and made their recommendation to council that we go with a fully insured plan. <clears throat> and in addition, that we go with uh, Cornerstone uh, and Crystal Sanciola as the broker, which puts the business right here in New Franklin. Um, and so, Medical Mutual, uh, you have a copy of their proposal. Uh, the, uh, the premium on this fully insured plan, which um, uh, essentially, for just about all purposes, mirrors the, the benefit levels that we had before. But it solves the issue relative to uh, access to providers, and specifically we're talking about Cleveland Clinic, uh, that uh, scratched us off the list. Uh, and were unavailable to us as providers before. $857,555. In fact, that's uh, uh, significantly less than, than what the uh, projection was for the uh, self-insured um, with the reference-based pricing. As I mentioned last time around, we expect certainly that there'll be increases in the next couple of years, but even if the, if the increases are 25% um, a year, we'll still average out at about what we would pay for the self-insured with the uh, reference base. So I think it's, it, it's a good uh, suggestion for the city. Um, and uh, I would ask you to proceed on that aspect of it. The dental aspect of it, because we are self-insured, it was all under one umbrella, uh, and so now we have to get separate dental coverage. We were spending about 40,000 a year on our dental, uh, and, the, and the bids came in uh, about that. The proposals came in right around that. Uh, and there were a variety of them, but initially this legislation was drawn to accept a proposal from some, and I've got a surprise at the end of this, because I know you always enjoy that. Uh, it, it was Sun Life. Uh, and, um, but we had, we had a few concerns about what the cost would be, because we're trying to, again, not put any additional burden on the employees uh, financially. Um, and, and so questions arose as to, uh, out of network dentists and what the cost would be and how much the employees would be responsible for. Uh, and, um, um, and so we asked for a, a, a look at a plan that maybe had a little broader network because just internally, in a very unofficial survey, we had five people in the admin office and uh, none of the dentists were covered and a couple in the local. <laughs> so uh, we asked uh, Crystal to reach out to, as she said, obviously, to answer questions, uh, to reach out to Dell and Dental and see, it. and so we think they have a little broader network, and their pricing came in about two thousand less. Um, 
and you see the 36,700 is what those prices would have computed out to, as opposed to the 38,000 for Sun. So we said, well, good, we'll go down. Uh, this has been a moving target. Uh, I mean, that's a decision that was made yesterday. Uh, well, today, Sun Life has decided that perhaps they could give us a little better price. Uh, and they did give us some additional information relative to network. And that information came in late today. So what we're going to ask you to do is uh, amend this, this resolution to take out any reference to the dental. And we'll take a harder look at these two, uh, and then we'll come to you in two weeks with a, uh, with a resolution relative to the dental. Uh, and Crystal has indicated to us that uh, she's confident that whichever of the plans uh, you authorize at that point in time, we can have it in place for an effective date of January 1st. So I hope that's not too much. I hope it was helpful. And again, Crystal's here if, if, if anybody has any, any questions uh, relative to at least for tonight, the medical or the dental. Just for a comment, uh, through my gardener's union, we've been at Medical Mutual for a long time, hand built the dental. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, my wife takes care of all this, you know, but she said, well, she's never had no problem with when you get a contact a contact person or anything like that. So, we've had good success uh, at it for 20 some years through Medical Mutual. We've dealt at, at least 10, maybe a dozen uh, years. So, you haven't had network problems or? Nope, we use a dentist that's local there, and we have the problems, and any hospital we want to go to, we have to make sure we've never had any issues. That's my comment. Thank you. Anyone else have questions, comments? Um, I, I will say a couple things real quick, <laughs> like I always do. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I am kind of concerned that we're, even though we started this in June, I feel like we're kind of rushing it uh, to get it done and, and uh, uh, pass it on the first reading and uh, uh, not for us to see the other proposals. Uh, saying that, I am very confident in the decision that was made with the committee. Uh, we have, what, 15 people on that committee? Uh, 15 people from all departments uh, on that committee. And I sat in on the first meeting with the, the first introduction of the proposals from the different companies. And the people on that committee, they, they were very interested in what was going on. They asked some good questions. Uh, they were concerned about how it would affect them. They were concerned about how it would affect the city and the numbers. I mean, they looked at everything. They, they didn't take it lightly. They didn't just go with, what's going to save me the most money? Or, you know, what's, what's best for me individually? They looked at the... They, I think they, they looked at everything. Uh, so I'm very comfortable with what their, what their decision is and what their recommendation is. And, and I think we should, be, we should all feel comfortable moving forward with it. Because again, these are, these are people from every department, uh, from every level within those departments. And I, I think they did a wonderful job. And I, I appreciate them taking the time out of their day to uh, be a part of that. And I hope we continue that committee straight out of going forward to you know make our programs even better Absolutely. for everybody. Can I make one comment on my user before we move on? You said we did look at all the proposals. You said without looking at all the proposals. Well they did. Okay. But but we you know they and okay. their it's and their right. job was to uh, make a recommendation to us and for okay. us to uh, just you know I just want to make sure that everybody didn't understand, understand, understand that we didn't that they yeah, did they did a great them. job. They did a great <laughs> job of looking at everything. They did a great job of asking questions, and uh, uh, I feel very comfortable with, with the job they did for it. Um, so uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not comfortable with you know first reading, but we are on a bit of a time crunch on this. And we did learn, like we talked about before, that something like this, we need to start sooner. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't realize right. what, what was involved in, in this process. And it just so happens that the, the, the way it you know, when we reach the end of it, we're at the calendar year, this is when most of these right. plans are priced out uh, on a calendar year basis. So uh, this will put us on a calendar year basis for renewals, et cetera, which I think would be a good thing, because that's what the that's what the providers are more comfortable with. Well, I think, too, that the only reason that it is kind of a time crunch, and I understand how you feel, I think most of us feel the same way, but I think the only reason, correct me if I'm wrong, is because it's better insurance, less expensive. And that's what you're telling us. I mean, just to wrap it up in a little nutshell, 
it's better insurance, less expensive, more like, if I may quote you, we used to have. Sure. And some of our employees have been suffering. Yep. So I, I think that's the key. Okay. Anybody else? I'll just, uh, I'm not sure all of Council's people. Thank you for, for pushing for that and for that uh, committee. That's, that's good job. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, we'll ask the way to three on this then. Move forward. Anything you want to share with us? No, I'll I just, listen. Oh, okay, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just opening it up. <laughs> <laughs> As I agree with Nancy, along with Cornerstone Benefit Services, I'm partnered with Gears Insurance, so we're right here local on 619. Um, 500 West Turkey Foot Lake Road, and I do appreciate the opportunity to work with you on your benefits plan. And um, you know, we pride ourselves on service, and we're right here local, so um, we're looking very much forward to working with you. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Okay, we will move on to resolution 21R80, a resolution adopting the temporary appropriations for 2022 for City of New Franklin and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. And we do this every year because for whatever reason, we're unable to have a budget uh, by the end of the year for the new year to start and we wait until the end of March to have the budget. Uh, so we'll be asking to wait for three on this. Anybody have any comments on it? Well, actually the reason that we do it the way that we have done it for many, many years is because the certificate estimated resources that we have that we must go by for our appropriations does not include our ending our actual ending balances and to do it at the end of the year all the departments have other issues that they're doing it at that moment and it and it has always worked out better that we have the time in March to sit down <clears throat> with all the correct figures and establish exactly what we want to do so there is a reason that we do it this way and it has worked well for us and we've actually talked to the department heads and they're they like doing it that way because it gives them time to have separate meetings go over all of the new things that they are interested in and projects for the new year so there is a method to our madness it's not just madness so i just want to let you know anybody else thank you sir. so we'll ask the way for three on that Moving on to resolution 21R81, a resolution authorizing the return of funds advanced by the general fund to the top school violence prevention fund uh, and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. And again, this is a grant that we work with Manchester schools uh, for their safety and security within their buildings. Uh, and as part of that grant, we had to apply, we had to administer it. So it's just taking care of that. Yeah, it, we actually finally have gotten all the money back that we've already we, that we had already paid out, and so now we are going to give that money back to the general fund. So this is the last one that we'll see of this. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. And that's uh, for an amount of eighty thousand five hundred three dollars and twenty seven cents. Next, we have. Resolution 21R82, a resolution requesting that Summit County Fiscal Officer make an advance payment of tax funds for the tax year 2021 payable and 2022 to the City of New Franklin, declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon <coughs> passage. Again, this is something that we have to do every year at this time. Yeah. We'll ask to wait for three on this. That's how I just, just click right through these things. Resolution 21R83, a resolution authorizing additional appropriations to the 2021 annual operating appropriation budget and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. And this is uh, $15,000 to the income tax fund to cover additional income tax collection fees and $25,080.68 to the insurance fire losses fund uh, contractual to cover additional insurance monies received due to fire losses. Any other comments on that? Pretty straightforward. Yeah, we will exactly. ask to waive the three. Am I done? Yes, sir. I can go. No, you read my Okay, so <laughs> we will close the finance committee meeting at 614. All right, All right open up community development at 614. We have resolution 21R78, resolution authorizing New Franklin to enter into an agreement with Insight Advisory Group LLC to serve as a planning consultant in New Franklin, declaring that this 
uh, resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. Is this is this a renewal? We, we're working with them all current. Yes. Yeah, they've been with us since 2014. Uh, we did a two-year contract two years ago. Yeah. Uh, and um, they have uh, agreed to um, at the same rates for both the two years, the $30,000 rate. Um, there, there's a freeze in that regard. We outsource our planning. They've been effective. Um, the, uh, and certainly, I mean, most cities would have a, a planning director. Uh, by outsourcing this, we save the salary, we save the benefits, we save the overhead. Uh, there is a termination clause in the agreement as well for 60 days termination without notice if for some reason we become dissatisfied with the work. Uh, we can terminate it without cost with 60 days notice. And the, the idea that they're willing to lock in the fee for two years is why we're suggesting a two-year uh, agreement again. Okay. Anyone have any questions or comments? Jim is reading. I, 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 uh, I thought the, the last contract was uh, 15000 per year uh, because we were going to try to accomplish some of those tasks uh, in-house. It was a not to exceed thirty, as opposed to a lock-in at thirty. And for, uh, and for a period there, well, it was up and down during the time that we used them. So there was a period that they were billing at the $15,000 rate. Once we got busier, uh, they, they, we moved it back up to the rate that came out to $30,000 a year. It was a, the, the one that's in place right now is not to exceed thirty. Did we okay. get one before at fifteen? I don't know. No, the, the year before, in 2019, was 30000 Yeah. And then for 2021, I understood it was 15000 per year because we're going to try to do things in house and they were going to give us two hours each week in in the building yeah uh is that still part of our program it, it is it, that's written in the contract as well now some of that we've been doing by zoom quite <clears> frankly <throat> as opposed to but we're, they're certainly spending those hours with us okay anyone else you guys uh comfortable waiting for three on that yes Move along to 21R79, a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Summit Soil and Water Conservation District for the provision of technical watershed assistance and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. That's something that we, you know, we certainly need. The flood we had a few years ago. I think that's that really this stemmed from a lot of that. I think we saw involvement. And this is something new that uh, that Summit Soil is, is uh, initiating, and Sandy Barbett from uh, Summit Soil has been uh, a real activist. Uh, and there's a number of communities who are joining in on this, uh, and I think more will follow. And it's a very reasonable $5,000, but it's it's uh, really going to pinpoint an area that we want to spend more, give more attention to. Uh, we have, no, I, won't go into detail, I won't go on at length. But you guys are probably aware, and you, you men and women are aware, that we've got a, a variety of um, the stormwater issues. And there's water quality issue built into this as well, which is also important. We've had some people over the, you know, during the, you know, from time to time calling, you know, what are we doing to make New Franklin green? Uh, and so this addresses that in part. But a lot of those uh, stormwater, the vast majority of those stormwater issues are on private property. Uh, and they're on, uh, you know, uh, ditches and that uh, were put in by developers that the city has uh, no ownership, no interest, no legal interest, no right to do much with it. So what I'm hopeful here is that, first of all, we're, we're talking about indexing, further indexing and catalyzing the uh, And then I, I'm also hopeful that this might lay the groundwork for us to start looking for some grant uh, assistance to try to address some of these otherwise we're just gonna have to prioritize them and, and try to go at them to, to help people with some really significant stormwater issues. I mean there's some people that have significant portions of their property that are eroding because of a ditch that you know runs through the back of the property that didn't seem like a big deal twenty years ago, but now it's now it's heading for their shed. That those types of things. So it's a one year contract for five thousand dollars. You don't have any questions on that? I told you you should just read on it. Well, I don't, I don't have a question. I, I, I do have a comment about it. Uh, when looking up the uh, uh, some soil and water conservation district, going to their website, they offer a lot of stuff for homeowners, and uh, you should homeowners should go to their website. Is uh, SSWCD 
Summit Soil Water Conservation District uh, dot <coughs> Summit o, Ohio, Summit O, O-H, dot net. Uh, or you can just Google it and I'm sure it'll come up. But again, their, their website is, is very good. They have a lot of information on there. A lot of things they do for homeowners that you may be surprised uh, is available for you. So, so please go to that website and check it out. And we just had a gentleman that came in, Joe, that came in, his mom was ill. And he was saying that um, he had such a huge problem. Is that one you're talking about, Paul? For the ditches running down? Uh, I, I, I have to put a last name with it, but sure. it's one of the many things. Yeah. That was his last yeah. name. Oh, Joe, Young. Joe Young. Yeah. He lives in yeah. Minnesota. I yeah. think that yeah. was one that was, yes. that was brought to us not too long ago. Yeah. Joe came in. That's one. Anyone else? I think that's a great idea. We should wait for three unless someone has an objection to that. Mm -hmm. Right, and we uh, close at six twenty. Anybody else have anything for their uh, talk about their news? I do have a problem. I brought it up, I think, a few weeks ago. I don't remember exactly when it was, and I apologize for that. We have our ball field, Lockhart Field, listed on Cherry Avenue still. Mm -hmm. When you pull it up, and even when you go to like the youth football and the baseball thing, it's all listed on Cherry. So I think we need to change that to Caterly Way. And I don't know if it's up to us because we changed the name to get in touch with like Google Maps and explain to them that it's been changed, but it's still coming up um, on Cherry Avenue as opposed to Caterly Way. And that's the reason the cars are going there. All right, I'll follow up on that. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks, Judy. Anything All right, I'm going to go ahead and call it order. City New Franklin Council meeting this Wednesday, December 1st, 2021. Christmas Street's got me with the end. 622. And for the pledge, please. This is the flag of the United States of America and the New Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Cox? Here. Mr. Hargett? Here. Mrs. Jones? Present. Mr. Fetterman? Here. Mr. Hall? Here. Mr. Scott? Here. Thank you. I think we make a motion to approve the minutes of the rear scheduled meeting from November 17, 2021. Second. There's a second. Any comments, discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Same. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. All right, thank you. Move into our public comments. Please keep your comments addressed to council in under four minutes. State your name and your address. Yes, sir. Uh, Mark Sedlak, 5497 Grove Road. Uh, but a couple of things here. Uh, last week, uh, the last meeting, I asked about the, uh, the city's website and found out that it was Civic Plus that you're going to be working with. Um, I went and looked around their, on their website and found that what I was asking for the city to work with them to get is a module they have readily available called Civic Engage. Um, question I have is who at the city is the per point person going to be working with them? Katie Smith, Kate, and then I'm sure that's a component, one of the components of, the, of what we're uh, going to be, that, that we're, we're purchasing. Okay, that's just so I, I kind of figured it was going to be her. But, Figured I'd ask, so if I have anything, some suggestions or whatever, I can get a hold of her. Um, let's see, the second thing, somebody just was talking about, Mr. Cox just mentioned about the uh, Summit County's website. Um, there's a government website called ready.gov that if you're not aware of it, you should go to and look at. Uh, it's FEMA's Federal Emergency Management Administration's website in getting people on an individual level, being at least modestly prepared for natural disasters, natural emergencies, and they have information there about um, all kinds of materials they have available, lists of things that if you don't have, you probably should. They have a 72-hour list and then some other stuff if you want to be more, even more prepared, you can add to it, but it's just really interesting reading. and. There's uh, several good books on the subject, too, about being prepared for the emergency, because in most cases, when you have a natural disaster of any kind, like the <coughs> hurricanes and so forth, um, city administrations uh, aren't prepared to handle 
those kinds of emergencies on the kind of scale that need to happen, and people really need to have some responsibility for themselves, and it's a, it's a good, good thing to do. Um, and then the last thing was uh, on the issue that was brought up about the renewal on the insight contract. Uh, I guess my first question is, since we've talked about and have said that we're going to redo the comprehensive plan to find out what the citizens really want before we start planning on what we're going to do, um, does it really make sense to continue paying somebody to do planning for the city when we don't really know what we're planning for? Um, and so I guess the question is, 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 there, is it possible to take a hiatus from working with them until we know that, and then can that be restarted at some later date, that relationship? Or if not, what are we paying them to do when we don't really know yet what we're going to do? This is a this comment section, OK? Yeah. OK, that's, that's my question on that. Uh, and then one other question, this is, I don't think this should wait till later in the meeting. I just wanted to ask Mayor Adamson, uh, I know you two contacted Dan at Valley Energy about solar. Has he gotten back to you with any information yet? We're trading information, yes. We're engaged okay. with him. Right. I'm just going to give him a nudge because I'm a big customer. And, and, and if it saves some time, and that it's an agenda item, and it might save some time, it's, even though this is comment, not question, there's a, if, if, if it's okay. That's fine. Uh, there's still plenty of work going on relative to planning. Um, we have businesses that are, that are trying to relocate. Uh, we have grants that we're trying to secure. Um, so it, it's an ongoing process. I mean, just to name a couple. Uh, the, the, there's still plenty of work. It, it wouldn't be prudent for us to just be <coughs> planning on hold while we proceed with the, with the comprehensive plan of the day. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, sir, go ahead. Yes. Uh, I'm on uh, Facebook with New Franklin. Your name and address, please. Larry Thomas, 5969 Grove Road. Thank you. Good on. Thank you. And people were talking about uh, this notepad. We're in this aggregate. And if you miss it, which I did years ago, I, I'm looking at my bill one day and I, this isn't who I picked. So I got it straightened around. Now, the same thing is happening. If you don't do anything, they're going to slam you into NOPEC. Now, I, which was about a, oh, they, through uh, the gas company, if you just take their standard choice right now, it is a dollar cheaper than this NOPEC. And then this NOPEC says they're going to give this to us for three months. And then Katie bar the door, I say, uh, but I don't want to get slapped. I sent my letter in, but there's a lot of people my age, older, maybe younger, that's, this happened to me once years ago uh, when Bolus was... So the same thing is sort of happening again, and I, 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 I don't want people getting slammed then not knowing what happens. Uh, yeah, but now, well, I, I'm going to step on you. Uh, first of all, uh, we did have several calls on that. Susan's going to address that, plan to address that tonight as well. Uh, we also have an information sheet that we're going to uh, post on the website to try to bring people up to speed and be informative on that process. But I'll steal a little bit of your thunder to tell you this, that uh, that NOPEC is the agency that's currently selected by Summit County for the gas aggregation. And Summit County has the authority to do that by virtue of uh, a ballot issue that was passed in 2002 uh, throughout Summit County. And it was a ballot issue for uh, for Franklin Township at that time as well. And each political entity had the, had the ability to vote to be part of the aggregation or not. And the voters in New Franklin voted to be part of the aggregation. And part of that uh, whole process was uh, that it was adopted. Uh, part of the provision of the ballot issue was that it was going to be an opt-out aggregation. 
probably steal them all the time. All right, I've never heard of that well, before. Well, you don't want all right. Well, I mean, so it's, it, this is not a city initiative at this point. We don't have any authority over that. Yeah. The voters approved it, and I that's why heard it's in somebody place. signing you up for something that you. Sorry about that. Well, really you're in a trash that? aggregation. It's the same thing. Aggregations are all almost always opt outs because because it, what it is is they're making a they're making a deal or getting a bid from a company for service, but they have to know how many people are going to be covered to get that bid quote from somebody. Mm -hmm. So it has they have to have a, a population. And back in 2002, when Franklin Township um, came alongside Summit County and it was went on the ballot, everybody opted to do that because. It didn't you can you can opt out, but you would generally if you were if we were not locked in with a supplier, you would be you would be in no pack. Which I'm okay. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to back up a little bit because if I don't explain some of this, you won't know. It, it's you don't always just get thrown in with no pack. If you have, you may be asked to. NOPEC's one of the nice guys that will let you out of that contract. You can opt out of it, and they won't charge you. But there's, for the gas, for example, there are over 91 different suppliers that are on the apples to apples list. Lots of different prices, lots of different terms. It can be two years, it can be 36 months, it can be, you know, and they can charge you $150 or nothing to get out of that contract. So there are a lot of different options for people, but you have to do it. You have to do it on your own. And we chose back in 2002 to make to step in there with Summit County, so they do the negotiations to try to get us the best. When you rates. say we, you mean the voters? The voters. Of, we of, of New Franklin, Franklin and other other yeah, communities I mean, like Coventry. Yeah, <laughs> Coventry did the same thing. At one well, of the a lot of them. The municipalities a lot of them. Yeah. This was a good deal. In fact, I would go along with it. It was a good deal, but it's definitely not a good deal. But you had the option not to go along yeah, with it. I never went down the, I never went by a car lot and said, "Hey, we sent you a letter the other day." And uh, you didn't respond to it, so you bought this car. Yeah, but it's that's not sort of quite the same, same thing, thing, though. Not quite the same uh, thing. Oh, though. that's definitely the same thing. But you have you have the option to do otherwise, and and also each utility, um, because there's aggravation for electric and gas, but gas is the one we're getting calls about right now. I guess because it's winter, they all have their own suppliers through through the company that sends you the bill. That's called the SCO. A lot of people stick with that. Dominion has their own company, and their price from their from their website is not less than uh, is not less than no checks right now. They're, the one on their website they have a variable rate of six dollars and thirty six point three five two MCF, and that's only good through um, the 9th of December. No PECs is under that. No PEC guarantees their right to prove that at least this is what their representative has always told us is two cents less than the SCO rate. Here's let me let me summarize, but we're we're putting this fact sheet together. I want to make it clear we have no dog in this fight. No. We're not promoting no PEC. Uh, that's who county is that's the county who the county is using right now for for the aggregation. There's been other entities in, in previous years. They didn't begin with no pet. Um, and the opt-out part of it, the voters approved it uh, that way. So uh, essentially, we're stuck with that. Uh, the good news is we can opt out, and there's no penalty to opt out of no pet at any point in time. Uh, so what we'll include in the, in the information that we'll post will be contact phone numbers for no pet to make it as easy as we can for people to uh, opt out if they choose to. We'll also provide the link to find the other current prices. Uh, and uh, uh, beyond that, uh, and Betty Lynn Fisher at the Beacon Journal does a really nice job of uh, doing comparisons on these. So you might want to go on the Beacon Journal site and, uh, and, and see what she has to say about the That's latest. That's what I've been doing all yeah. these years. Yeah. And beats. But it's not something, that, unfortunately, that the city can undo. It, it's you know it's something that the voters approved and it's in place. Oh, if I may, but Ohio um, has I, the apples to apples, which is 
on on the website, which is mostly most people go to. I can give you that address. It's www.energychoice.ohio.gov, and you can look up the apples to apples for electric and gas on that. So you can. They give you all the terms and all the information about all the suppliers, so you can make your choice that way for both electric and gas. Right now, in electric, Energy Harbor is the um, the aggregate, and then um, NOPEX is the one for gas. But either way, if you go to that website, you can find all the providers, whether it be for electric or gas, and make your best deal. Yeah, Yes, when, when this first started, uh, we got a notification that the letters were being sent out. I called NOPEC to find out exactly what was going on. And they said that only people that are part of NOPEC, currently part of NOPEC, or part of the Dominion uh, standard rate are getting the letters. Nobody else would get a letter. So some people are saying, I never got a letter. Well, you weren't supposed to. If you currently have a contract with another supplier, you will not be switched over. Well, you will I not. Did. Huh? I did. Well, okay. I, took, I took Dominion's standard choice. Okay, and then, and then you would get that letter. Yeah. So if you if you that's what I just said. If you're with Dominion or NOPEC, you got the letter. Okay. If you have a contract with another supplier, you should not have gotten the letter. And there's no opt out because they're not switching any contracts. They're not taking anybody away from any contract they currently have and automatically putting them on NOPEC. It's only with those two organizations, NOPEC or Dominion Standard Choice Program. That clear that up for you. Really? You got, is that, it's my understanding of it too, we have a contract that's good for next year that's like three bucks cheaper than NOPEC. Yeah. So. All right, cool. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Inside Advisory Group is the firm that has- Excuse me, you're Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Terry Crow Size 438 Center. Uh, Inside Advisory Group is the firm that has We Grow or We Die as the slogan for New Franklin's economic development. Inside Advisory Group helped develop plans showing multiple areas targeted for development, including existing <laughs> housing areas transitioning to commercial light industrial, two areas labeled single family residential, and two areas labeled high dens density residential. I'm concerned that Insight Advisory Group does not have the interest of a majority of New Franklin residents in mind. If they were in tune with the feelings of this community, they would not have come up with those plans. I'm concerned that Insight will merely give lip service to the desires of the community while going ahead with project development that will take New Franklin on a path away from the rural community that we value. Anyone else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Ball six three two five Leave Drive. Uh, Judy, you could I I look into it. We can easily make a correction on Google Maps to point the address. Before we leave tonight, could you give me the address on the chart put that correction in? And I thought so when I mentioned it last time because but then it dawned on me when I looked all of the um, sports events up. They do list it as Sherry Alley still, yeah. so I don't think they realize. I, I had the same problem over at my property on, on uh, West Minnesota. I okay. put a correction, they corrected it for me, no problem. Okay, honey, I will give it to you. Thank, Thank you. you. And the other comment I have is, a uh, question I have is, um, I have not seen the uh, <coughs> uh, contract we have with the two house and the arrangements we have over there, but is the city on uh, uh, the cleanup detail for yard and that type of stuff as well as as the other things we've been doing over there, is I don't know if that's part of our our deal with with uh, the Tudor House or if, if that's on the new owners that are going to do the clean up and that type of stuff for for yard over there. That's the only kind of thing. Well, is that the, our city crew was over there today? And that's the reason I asked. Yes. Oh, thank you. Valerie Sedlak, 5497 Grove Road. Um, I, I'm actually going to change what I was going to bring up because I'm just curious in the past when we've had the public comments, it's been kind of a back and forth thing, which I personally value, and maybe that's not the intent of this. And so I just wanted some clarification. And if that's not the intent, if it's just we make a comment, walk away and don't really have any dialogue with our city, 
how do we get that dialogue going? The comment part, like, if you, if you've ever been at any company, comment part is you get a comment. We put in the end where we would answer questions. So we have something on the end for that, if you have a question. So we, uh, it just got so far away from that. First, there's just to be comments. Some people just like to have a comment, and that's it. On the end, if you look at the end of the thing, we have, before the end of it, we have public questions and answers. That's when we can communicate. And we've had that on there. You guys have only been coming for five, I don't know how long. I've been doing this for 17. And we've done it for, so at the end is that. So I'm trying to get back to that where it's just not all just open okay, talking perfect, and stuff. Okay, perfect, perfect. I was just concerned that yeah. it, it was no longer going to be a thing. Well, it, 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 it never was supposed to be going to be a thing. But I've always been, well, since I've been president, kind of let the communication go back and forth. But at some point, you've got to just be like, give us your comments. And then when we get down to the end, we have our extra where if you can find any other community that has the extra in the end, then yeah, I don't care what other communities. Honestly, not but, even I, mean, room, I only saying, care what my community. I know. I'm just <laughs> saying, but I mean, it's very. We let it go a lot, Mister. I, I might yes. respectfully make the observation that unless there are three readings on a resolution, the way this is structured, <coughs> you guys talk about it in committee. People can come in and make a comment. Yeah. Then you vote, and there is no back and forth. Exactly. And then if it's only one reading, things get decided without any back and forth with the community. Okay, well, we're just going to transfer so, some money. But before we're just going to transfer some money, that's something we got to take care of. Well, we're not those gonna, are, are simple ones, weeks, but when you, do that. when you talk about a major change to how much the citizens are going to be paying for the employees of the city's health care, yes. um, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, we've been and talking about there are some June. questions. But, but from what I'm hearing is that there was a committee to discuss that, but it was all city employees. Was there any community involvement in any of that? Not that one, no. Well, okay, we're the ones paying for it. Yep. So shouldn't we have some input into that process? Is one question I would ask. So, you have my comment. All right, good. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Don Wright. 447 Catalina Drive. Well, I got to say, probably going to take no longer than four minutes. I know everybody has been very confident about them, so I like to say what I got to get off my chest. I've been doing a lot of homework, and some things are going on that's got to get stopped. I'll tell you why it started. I've lived in this neighborhood since 1989, and around my immediate area, just in my immediate home, I've lost 14 residents. They've died. And they've expired. They've reached their time in the dirt, no longer here. In the process, they were good neighbors. They kept up their property, they took care of their sewers, they took care of their plumbing, they took care of their roof, they took care of the things that they had. And I had them as an example, and I followed suit. I've done tried to do the same thing. A lot of people don't know what's going on, and I think I've done my homework in the fact that. I read the leader, and I noticed in the leader magazine, the leader paper, that on the 21st, the two-door house became an issue here. Now, I guess it looks like from what I've read, what I've uh, surmised, I guess it's going to be something we're looking into and doing something with, and somehow or other there's going to be a plan. I hope, don't jump on me just yet till I tell you what i got to say, that we're going to be responsible for doing something with that. Now they got a trail project. They want to bring out a barber. They want to bring a trail path project past some of these people's houses. And I would object strongly if I was having a trail pack project coming by my house. We're going to be involved in that. On the 19th of Southern County, proposal about the sewer rate increase up in, up in Akron. And I've sent people all along. And they still don't have the plan on exactly how the sewer is going to work or the water is going to work. What are they going to do? I sure don't have anything in black and white that I can actually put my hand in and put in my file. So I'm bringing that up. The 26th of November, the leader uh, started talking about the raises. So I've heard something about the raises today. I've heard spending money over here, spending money over there. And we're a small community. Now I want to tell you what's alarming. The reason why I've mentioned the 14 people. 
This is right out of the, this is right off of the internet. This is the house that sold two doors away from me. And this is what they had the audacity to put in the, on the internet. The sale will be sold as is. Where is and inspections for buyers edification only? What does that mean? That edification word scares <coughs> scares some people because they don't know what it means. So they have a bottle look it up. I'll look it up. It means that they instruct and improve the house to their benefit of the person who's going to buy it. So they're selling this house for $140,000 right next door to me that's been working for 34 years to try to get my property where I want it to be. They sell it for 140 grand. So I start doing some inquiries, doing a little homework. I find out that the separate system is the original separate system that was there for the price of the child. So I'm thinking to myself, hmm, maybe that's one of the things I've been smelling in the summertime. These probably be looking to. So I started inquiring. Find out that I don't want the same situation I had. The neighbor two doors away from me who had his own land just condemned and got away with it for so many years they didn't do anything about it. Because I got one of the first separate systems to replace in this area. So I, I'll, I'll take care of mine. So I look at this guy over here, and I'm thinking to myself, let me check and see what the guy is doing. Well, then all of a sudden, this goes into some kind of a hiding out deal. $140,000 home now has been under construction, where no one knows since July on this internet. They're renovating on the inside. Because it's a piece of trash. It sold for $140,000 because the lady that lived there was a nice lady, but her husband died, and she didn't have the money to take care of it. So now they're over there doing it. Why am I bringing all this up? Bringing all this up because if we keep eroding our tax base, if we keep not worrying about how our neighbors are living, and some of our neighbors, neighbors need our help, this money that we're spending for all these projects that we're going around here doing, maybe we ought to turn that into a fund to take care of the lady down here, of, uh, uh, not far from my house, whose house the roof is coming off of it. Or go up the street here and see the people over here that can't even get the junk cars out of the front yard. Or go over here around the other side of the thing. I haven't mentioned these addresses. No, we'll get anybody mad at me. Come down the house and start shooting at me. But we can't have people building, uh, have a house, a nice house, and a great big mobile home sitting right next door to it like an airplane landing. I couldn't do that and get away with it. I tried putting an awning up in my property so my little wife could park her car in there. They told me when I was with a mayor here, you got to get it out of here. I complied immediately. I wish now I had stuck my ground because I was stayed there. Boss Miller told me I should have. <clears throat> now what I'm trying to say is this. We can't keep eroding this tax base or you're going to wind up like a little girl that I knew and took her under my wing when her mom and dad died. Up in Cleveland, she had a house that probably sold for close to 50000 in 1946. I pulled this up off the internet too. I'm a big internet watcher. And in that process, what she done she let that house fall down around her. She didn't have the money to fix it. Nobody helped her. So she ended up finally getting married after all these years. And guess what they just sold the house for? That same house, 46, it was built. Sold for less than 50 grand. Why? Because it was in disarray. Then they come in with these people we call them. Everybody knows what they call them. Okay. Now, now, now we know what they call them. We call them house builders. They buy a house like the one I'm just after talking about at 427 Catalina Drive. And they go in and dump a bunch of money in. That house just recently sold for 169 grand. In the meantime, we I bring all this to your attention for is tax basis of running. The people that's got the houses and take care of the houses, we're paying the heavy taxes. The people that are not doing it are getting off because they're saying, well, my house ain't worth that much more. I think we gotta really start looking at our community and how we can take care of each and every one before we start worrying about the two-door house, before we start worrying about the, the uh, some kind of a path that's coming from Barberton, before we start worrying about all these little things that we want to do, eroding our tax base by paying this and paying that and giving this and giving this away. we got to take care of our own first. All right. Our own people. Thank you. Okay? All right, thank you. I like an answer on that, too. I, I didn't raise this as issues not to get answers. I, I don't understand you. You said they bought this house and they're remodeling it, and now it's going to sell for more money, right? Well, I mean, the house up in Cleveland I was talking about. Oh, the house up right. here is remodeling, but what happened? 
they bought the house next door to me okay. for 140 grand. Okay. Well, then houses in those areas are bringing 160, yeah, yeah. 170, 180,000. Okay. So okay. Yeah, order, order. Yes. How was that? I'm not sure what your point is. If, if somebody fixes the house up for 100 and somebody pays 160, well, in the meantime, who's paying? Who's, they're going to pay taxes. Who's paying the taxes that this guy wasn't paying because his tax base dropped off? We're paying. Them. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure I understand you. But. Well, I see my taxes go up, and I complain about it. And I remember they didn't come from this city. They came from the county. So, and that thing, so. What's that? So most of them, the, our taxes are going up basically. Most of them came well, from the I, county and other things. If you've got answers, I'd be glad to get them in writing. All right. All questions we'll have to get together on. All right. Anyone else? I got one more thing. Yes, sir. Why can't we get the police report in the leader? Now, that's a ridiculous. This has been going on for, what, better than six months now? We've been having problems with that. It's an internal problem. It has to do with the computer aided dispatch, the, 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 the switch over that the uh, uh, county required, uh, and it's created problems in terms of being able to issue those reports. So we're working on it. Uh, we just haven't been able to get it. Maybe we didn't have police issues. No, it's there. <laughs> we're, we're working on it. All right, anyone else? All right, thank you. <clears throat> Again, we're going to go into our readings this evening in our legislation. We have seven first, no second, third are pending. Start with resolution 21-R-77. A resolution authorizing New Franklin to enter into agreements with Cornerstone Benefit Services and Medical Mutual for New Franklin's health insurance plan and Sunlight for dental insurance and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. This resolution is signed to the Finance Committee. We are amending the resolution to remove uh, some life and or Delta dental from the resolution uh, as we will deal with the uh, dental issue at next meeting, hopefully. Uh, so we move to waive the three readings of resolution 21R77 as amended. There's a second, roll call, please. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Lee? Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hoff? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hardin? Yes. We move to adopt Resolution 21 R77 as amended. Second. There's a second for the discussion. Roll call, please. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hoff? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hardin? Yes. Passes 6-0, thank you. We do resolution number 21-R-78. A resolution authorizing New Franklin to enter into an agreement with Insight Advisory Group, LLC, to serve as planning consultant for New Franklin and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. Yes, sir. It is, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this was assigned to community development, and uh, we uh, moved to wait the three with the, and I just want to make the comment that they touch more than just the the uh, comprehensive plan. They do other things for us, so it isn't their sole, their sole uh, purpose with us. There's a second roll we'll call, please. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hoff? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Move to adopt resolution 21R78. Second. Second. Roll we'll call, please. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hoff? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. A resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Summit Soil and Water Conservation District for the provision of technical watershed assistance and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. This was also signed to a community development and uh, we will leave the three on this as well. Second roll call, please. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargan? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. And uh, we move to adopt 21 hours
Second. Let's say in discussion. Roll call, please. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Move to resolution 21-R-8. A resolution adopting the temporary appropriations for 2022 for the City of New Franklin and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. This resolution is assigned to the Finance Committee. We move to waive the three readings of resolution 21-R-80. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hoff? Yes. All right. We move to adopt resolution 21-R-80. Okay. Second. Any uh, discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hoff? Yes. Okay, that passes six to zero. Move to resolution 21-R-81. A resolution authorizing the return of funds advanced by the general fund to the COPS School Violence Prevention Fund and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. This resolution is assigned to the Finance Committee. We move to waive the three readings on Resolution 21-R-81. Second. Yeah, second. Roll call, please. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hoff? Yes. We move to adopt Resolution 21-R-81. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hoff? Yes. That, that, that's 60. Mm -hmm. Move to resolution number 21-R-82. A resolution requesting that the Summit County Fiscal Officer make an advanced payment of tax funds for tax year 2021 payable in 2022 to the City of New Franklin and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. This resolution is assigned to the Finance Committee. We move to waive the three readings of 21R82. Second. Second. Roll call. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. We move to adopt resolution 21R82. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. That passes. We move to our last piece of legislation, resolution number 21-R-83. A resolution authorizing additional appropriations to the 2021 annual operating appropriation budget and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. This resolution is assigned to the Finance Committee. Uh, we move to waive the three readings on resolution 21-R-83. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hawk? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. We move to adopt resolution 21R83. Second. Second. Any discussion? I think that Jim should read the amount that we're going to take, but I think you better be the first time that you have to go okay. again. Okay. Sorry, finish. Not a problem. Uh, $15,000 to the income tax fund to cover additional income tax collection fees and $25,080.68 to the Insurance Buyer Losses Fund uh, cover additional insurance money to receive due to buyer losses. Any other discussion? Uh, roll call. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Hawk? <coughs> yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. <laughs> That passes six to zero. Again, that's the rest of our legislation. No second, third, or pending. Trouble. <laughs> uh, mayor's report. Uh, we got a few items. Um, I sent out to you, I believe, uh, we got a notice from the Howe Division of Liquor Control, uh, and it has to do with an application for a permit. Uh, and uh, it um, uh, gives us gives council until December 20th if the council 
uh, chooses to object or request a hearing, uh, it's for uh, some place called the PLX County, uh, and uh, we're thrilled. Uh, seriously, and uh, nothing but best wishes. Uh, but in any event, we can address that at the next meeting. If anybody has any concerns, please express them to me. Uh, otherwise, at the December 15th meeting, assuming there are none, uh, we'll authorize and, and direct the clerk to indicate that we're not requesting here. All right. Um, the uh, Republic contract, I met with Terry Thompson from Republic today, and the, the chronology here is that our contract was up, uh, and uh, Republic um, uh, suggested, well, our options initially were to go out to bid. Republic suggested that, uh, that we might uh, ask Green uh, whether we could piggyback on their contract, uh, which came in at um, $16.41 for the unlimited. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so we made that, council approved that uh, request. We made the application to Green. Green came back on in November and, and said, yes, that's good with us. I met with Republic today. And it was, uh, and uh, what Terry indicated to me was they had some reservations relative to the pricing at this point in time. That the, uh, that they did the bid in uh, February of 2021, uh, and that uh, circumstances has changed. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm reiterating what he indicated to me. Uh, uh, costs have gone up, gas has gone up, steel has gone up, trucks that they, uh, uh, they, they have on order, 82 trucks, they're going to be $470,000, they're going to be uh, 370000 now they're going to be 440000 labor issues, and they're struggling to be able to commit to that rate. Um, so there's a, uh, uh, I mean, this meeting was, you know, about six hours ago, eight hours ago. Uh, the, uh, they are not bound to honor that with us. Uh, it was at their suggestion that we suggest the piggybacking as opposed to the bids. Uh, so they're not legally bound in that respect. Uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Thompson indicated that he was going to suggest some alternatives. Uh, he thought there may be some provision in the green contract, which is basically what we've been picking at, backing on, that would permit some, uh, some additional increase uh, uh, relative to uh, uh, increased costs that they would propose to us and see if we wanted to agree to that. Um, and in the alternative, we're going to have to go out for bid. Uh, so this is, I haven't even had a chance to talk to the law director about it yet. Uh, I just want to keep council informed on that. And we're going to be having some significant discussions over the next you know, 10 days here. Um, um, my intention is to um, do the best I can to secure uh, the identical uh, rates with green. Uh, I'd prefer not to have to go out for bid. Uh, and, but if we have to, we will. And, and we have to exercise, execute something with Republic to continue services until those bids come in. Um, the one concession that he did request in, uh, as a cost saving measure for them would be to stay on the every other week recycle as opposed to every week, which is what the green contract um, included. If that were the only concession, I, I would I'd put that before council and see what you guys thought. But if, it's, if there's more than that, then, well, you know, ultimately, whatever happens uh, would have to be approved by council. So I'll keep you in speed on, in, up to speed on that as we go on day to day. I wanted to let you know that's where we are relative to uh, recycle, which is, oh, and they mentioned labor as well, and we all know that's an issue. So, um, all right, the uh, comprehensive plan update proposals are due on Friday. Uh, no idea how many we might receive. Um, initial screening, uh, I have uh, put together a screening committee to screen those initial uh, proposals. Uh, and then be able to make a recommendation to council. And what that screening will involve, it will, will be look at the initial proposals, um, make a determination as to, um, depending on how many we get, uh, we may proceed to Zoom meetings with each of the proponents uh, to just initially uh, hear from them in terms of any questions we might have about their proposals. Then we would look to the screening committee to 
uh, perhaps narrow the field, um, and, and then invite that narrowed field in for face-to-face uh, -face interviews. Uh, and uh, anything else that, that that committee might decide they need to do to get the information to make a recommendation to council, uh, we would uh, we'd ask that committee to do. And the committee yeah, the committee that I that, that I'm suggesting or I'm putting in place is uh, I would be there as mayor. Uh, Jennifer Six will be there as our planning consultant. Uh, uh, Barry Gano, our zoning inspector, would be there uh, because a lot of this has to do with zoning. Uh, I wanted to get a representative from council, and I wanted to get a representative from uh, the Citizens Advisory Panel. I've asked Mr. Cotts to serve as the uh, council representative. He's been up here a long time, uh, and he's agreed to serve. And I've talked to Mike Conwell from the Citizens Advisory Panel, and he's willing to serve as well. So that would be the panel that would, uh, the screening committee, and then ultimately uh, we'll, uh, and when we get to that interview process, and if more council wants to sit in for that, but, of course, we invite you to do that as well, because all of you will make a decision. Um, and we expect that's going to take some period of time. Uh, by the time we get them and screen them, we'll probably be in uh, to that third week of December before we have an initial meeting. Uh, and then when we try to set up these interviews because of the holidays, I expect that will you know, probably begin in early January. I would hope by mid-January we'd be in a position to make a recommendation to the council as far as who to get on board on this. Um, the tennis courts. Um, the um, I, I've met with Susan. We've looked at the numbers, and you know there were concerns of how we're going to fund this thing, and uh, do we need to go outside for funding? And the short answer is we're not going to have to. Uh, and it looks like we're, that we would be able to proceed in this fashion. Um, we have a, we'll have a balance of close to two hundred thousand dollars in the parks um, uh, fund. At the end of this year, now we bring in about 150,000 each year because it's five percent of the income tax. So that 200,000 would be the, the basic, you know, foundational piece. In addition to the grant of 50,000, puts us in 250,000 um, dollars. We are committed to making this a 750,000 dollar project, and we're I meet with the engineer. I met with Brian today. Uh, we're we're piecing out some of these things that we're in. We're going to do ourselves some of the things that were in the initial contract. I'm optimistic I'm, 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 uh, that we'll be able to stay within that range. That puts us at about $500,000 that we'll have to fund. We have those funds available in the general fund that we can allocate for that purpose. Uh, and then we would replenish the general fund from the parks fund. Um, I would say at a minimum of fifty thousand a year, but I think we'll be able to do much better than that. I think our fixed expenses from that one hundred fifty thousand a year are going to be somewhere in the range of seventy seventy five thousand dollars. So we should be able to service this debt no worse than seventy five thousand a year. Again, that ultimately this project will be funded entirely, uh, other than the additional grant money uh, through the parks money, uh, which can only be used for these types of capital projects. So. And we're still, you know, waiting, hopefully, that there may be some federal money coming. Uh, I'm not going to rule it out. We haven't heard anything negative. We haven't heard anything positive from the wait and see. That would be beautiful. <laughs> but we'll, well, we'll see. Are there plans? Are there pictures of what it's going to do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll be happy to share those. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, so uh, at this point in time, it will be our intention to proceed this way. and. We'll look to send out for bid again uh, right, at, right after the first of the year. But we're going to pare down some of the components of that bid. Uh, the site preparation, the site clearing, uh, some of the post uh, things, the, uh, some of the uh, uh, cement work, uh, some of the uh, driveway work. Uh, probably uh, the lights were an alternate anyway. And we'll probably take that off at this point in time and think about that in the future. It's really not a necessary piece. So, uh, but we'll get those new bids out in uh, early January. Um, Sunday, 2 to 5 p.m., uh, Buddy the Elf will be there, Santa Claus will be there at the uh, Tudor House, Christmas Open House. Uh, it will be in a tent, so it's outside. Uh, you know, it, we, uh, everybody's COVID sensitive and we're not gonna be indoors for that reason as much as anything else. But, uh, so we will be outdoors. Uh, there'll be heaters in there. We're, we're confident that, that uh, people will be comfortable. Uh, we got seven different acts. 
uh, and it, uh, singing groups that are coming uh, and performing, and it should be a great time. So if you can be there Sunday, 2 to 5 p.m., please be there. And let's see, lastly, we will be placing an e-waste recycle bin on the grounds over here in the uh, corner, far corner of the parking lot. Uh, and this will permit um, basically almost all things electronic to be deposited. Uh, uh, we use them once, uh, one weekend. Um, the uh, uh, Reworks, which is a county organization, have their own computer electronics drop off. We did that as well. As well. And at one point, they weren't so. There was. Uh, they weren't. In, well, we got the impression from them they weren't entirely confident with uh, the uh, e waste folks. Uh, and, and that has been dispelled. So we talked with Reworks as well, and we said, listen, we'd like to put this here. Do you have any problem with that? They said, no, we're satisfied with what they do. They have these in a couple different other communities, neighboring communities, and so we'll do one more service. Uh, and I'll, we'll, we'll be posting that on the website and, and giving that information. Uh, and the website is moving along. Uh, I think uh, we just got something today. That it'll be made and it'll be unveiled. So it takes a while to put all this stuff together. Uh, but um, that's in that's in process, and it will have all the bells and whistles that that we all want. So that'll be a good day as well. That's all I got. Thank you. Susan? Um, not much to report here. We're working on uh, winding down to our end of the year, so we're taking up doing working our lists and doing what we can. So there's really nothing much new. Um, as an aside, uh, just to let you know if you didn't know already. Today is the National Day of Repentance. So I thought I'd just bring people's attention. And also Pi Day. National Pi Day. Pi Day. Just know that one too. I'm over you. Pi Day again. All righty. Thank you. Go to old business and the old business. Good morning. 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 That it's a good idea because a lot of people come very prepared with questions <clears throat> and I think that's a really valid thought that we should all think about if they can't ask a question or ask me vote on something that put them kind of in limbo or it does me so I think we might want to rethink something you don't pass this president thing down to you, you okay you know, but I'm there. saying to you <laughs> I think that we really should rethink that because that made sense to me if they well, if you, I mean, if you take been... the time to look online what's been we're going to talk about and we we actually go through then i think that was that i think that was a good point i mean i really do because it, you don't have a place to ask the question until after it's already passed you can make a comment but that's, that's not that's, that's not, not getting our opinion back to you. That was the whole reason for having three readings, mm -hmm. so that it gets read, people can think about it, they can come in the next meeting, make comments right. before I it gets voted on. But it seems like everything always gets voted on on the first reading. But I think that's something all of us should think about because I do think it's a valid point. I was going to wait until the uh, public questions on that comment. Oh, sorry. But, uh, <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. I look at. Uh, the situation of having public comments at the beginning, that should be at the end. And we should probably bring out uh, public questions and answers and move that up to where the comments are at. That's just my opinion. I mean, I was going to wait for the public question before I brought that up. Said, we've had it like this for a long time. I mean, now we have some points, right. but that, I mean, it doesn't mean it's right, but now we're. Well, I'm just we're saying what they now. said made sense to me because. Mm -hmm. If you guys all read these, and I had a question, you already asked it. You don't know what my question is, or whether it makes sense to you. I'm just, I'm just saying it makes sense. But then I'm just a blonde. What am I saying? I'm not. I don't think that. That's fine. I don't know about your all your rules, but for your committee meetings, that could be possible. We've always been open. We've always been open during our committee meetings. Because that's when you're discussing all the pros and cons of it. We've always been open to comments during them meetings. Mm -hmm. so. I agree with you, but I think I think it's a valid point. I well, if you're here during committee meetings and we're talking about the legislation, you got a question for it, that's a good time to ask. Is that at 6 o'clock? Is that what you're referring to? Six well, we don't, we've, for years now, we just start at 6 o'clock. We used to start at 6 committee and not do our meeting until 7. 
And sometimes we'd have 45 minutes that we couldn't do anything. So now we just start at six, that's when the committee starts, and then we move that right into our meeting. So yeah, six o'clock like it's been for years, we do our committee right into our meetings. Okay, but during those committee meetings, yes. Um, is there input or questions a lot? Well, to to I've always been open. If somebody raised their hand, I'd call them. That's always been that way. I didn't know that. Wasn't implied yeah. there, but we're well, I mean, it's in front of the public. And if you would have made me, you could have called. But I've okay. been lately. It just hasn't been know. Good. You know. So if you want a question during committee meetings, okay. I've always been open. If somebody got their hand up, I'll call them. So thank you. And that's okay. a good time. I mean, good good stuff. If you got a question for it, then we're actually talking about it. That's a good time to do it. But how do you feel, Jim? Uh, I'm tired. I got up really early. Did you get up at 4 28 this morning? Uh, 2 30. Oh, okay. You got me this time. Yeah, so you couldn't go back to sleep. All right. I wouldn't work though. You just went in. Did it? Oh, 2 30. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, all right. Any other old new business? How about new old business? <laughs> All right, here we are. All the questions and answers. Yes, sir. Oh, hey. A hey, question regarding the uh, the five hundred thousand you're talking about freeing up or using for the tennis courts. So I understand we've got to set the seven fifty in value on the, the courts. Are we tracking the cost that we're having our guys over there doing the work and using that to apply as value for that finished product? So say. If we spend a hundred thousand dollars of labor over there doing stuff, is that hundred thousand figured into that seven hundred and fifty number, or is that on top of that seven hundred and fifty number? Well, uh, we'll have to determine. It, you know, at this point in time, I would it, probably I would but not be included yet. I, I think it should be included in that because you would pay a contractor to do that anyways. You would still expend those funds. Why wouldn't you track and keep you know and use those costs that we spent with the taxpayer money? To account towards that same total and bill, it's not a matter of it, we're not trying to reach a seven fifty number. If I understand well, your I, question, I, I thought you said that we're obligated to. Spend. No, 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 no. I'm I'm committed to. I'm personally committed to trying to keep that project to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, so still, no if your your end number is seven fifty, and we got it sounds like two fifty in the parks fund, so it looks like another five hundred we're going to come up with and spend towards that. If we're paring down the scope of the contract to bid out, wouldn't that service that we're doing internally still account towards that additional five hundred thousand? How do you mean count towards it? I'm not sure. I, what you I, mean. I, can, I think he, he's just trying to keep it under that number. He's not saying we want to spend. So then you're going to have a facility potentially of a greater value than seven fifty. Potentially, okay. yeah. Okay. And I'm not sure how much we're you know you know just exactly how much uh, in kind I guess that, that we'll have to provide internally. Okay. And last question with the proposals for the comprehensive plan and stuff, will that be coming back to the CAP committee and is there going to be any more CAP committee meetings? I know we had talked the last one about trying to do them every 30 days and we haven't heard anything on that. My thoughts in that regard is to allow this, and that's why I had a representative on that, but I think you could have too many cooks. Uh, and I, I think we've got to, we'll have a competent group to do the screening on that. My thought relative to the citizens advisory panel was to uh, have that on hold as we, at least until we reach a point of uh, who we're going to use on this uh, to lead us on the update. And then there's going to be a formation of a steering committee, uh, which will be in excess of 10 people. Uh, and uh, we'll look to get a representative group uh, on that steering committee. And uh, my thought at this point in time is to uh, just hold in abeyance what's going on with the Citizens Advisory Panel and sort of morph that into what, what happens with the steering committee because I look for this to be a, a concentrated uh, process uh, and that's the way we put the proposals together. There's going to be uh, public meetings um, and, and when we did this previously we, we did them in sectors. We did one in each, uh, uh, one in each ward uh, and uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a survey. So there'll be plenty of opportunity for input and for participation, uh, when the steering committee meets, those are public meetings, uh, and there is an opportunity for input there. So I think the people that are showing an interest will still be able to have an interest in it and be involved uh, in this process. The whole point of the update is to invite that community involvement. So I think we'll engage the people that way, and in that, in that sense, 
Uh, I think the Citizens Advisory Panel, in, in my view, would be a tool that we would we sort of incorporate those folks into this update process. And then once the, once the update's completed, then reform that committee and, uh, and for the value that it might have. Could you send out an email to the group just kind of tell them where we are? I know a lot of us have been thinking, you know, last conversation was 30-day intervals, and we haven't heard anything. So if you could just be appreciated, you could send something out, given that same type of an update, and just let everybody know where, where the committee stands. That's fair enough. Thanks. What was our return when we did that years ago? Uh, it was over 30 percent, about 33 percent. So if you send it out to 100 percent, you get 33 percent back. I mean, but that's you know that was mailed to people's homes. So well, they consider that in the in the trade. I mean, that's they consider a, that's that a, that's a very good return. <laughs> the valid response. It's crazy that that's a, people 70 some percent of the people don't even take the time to fill it out. So, so I mean, everybody's got to keep that in mind too. So that's why we're up here sometimes. We gotta try to make decisions on. 30 percent input from your whole community but they, they could even fix that, that that response by having it more convenient they, they could have a qr code at the bottom we could actually scan that in and go to a form online and fill it out and that qr that qr code would be your validation that you are the actual resident i, I, I mean, see things like that uh, obviously I mean, that's what i was up here this was back mm -hmm. when you, you got right. a I'm first just talking you about had it in forward. your hands if you didn't have to do nothing but fill it out and put it back in your mailbox so, I mean, yeah, that's, that's new stuff. You didn't do it with your phone. But you know what? There's a ton of people that don't have that reader on their phone. You know, you want to think that, but I guess it's probably less than 30%. You know, I have one, but I know a ton of people that don't have it. So, anyhow. You need a drawing for a gift card. That'll incentivize Yeah, you pay someone's. people to do something. Yeah, they want to do it. You can send them something that they can touch, fill out, and just walk to their mailbox and put in, and 70% 70, 70 of people don't do it. What, one last thing for the mayor. Are they doing the Christmas lights uh, contest this year? I don't know anything about that either. Uh, I have not heard from the police. I don't know why they wouldn't, but yeah, I'll have to check on that. Done it every year. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing, but I'll have to check on that. But if we tell everybody that everybody wants to go out there and do it. You just got to go out there and do it and not expect to get rewarded for it. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a house on uh, South Mesner. I know. They they put put year, every year, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, this goes back to that uh, comprehensive plan and the, and the steering committee on that. Um, the Citizens Advisory Panel, there were quite a few people in there that had some very good uh, observations about um, potential planning. And in fact, uh, I think you know, your choice of light was a good one um, to be on the screening committee to screen the proposals. Um, I think it would be a good idea for you to consider taking the members of that citizens advisory panel and rolling them into the steering committee for the development of the comprehensive plan and the survey that will be part of that um, because I think you get some good input on, on some of the subject matter that to be in that survey. Um, that was one comment. Um, Second comment was uh, it had to do with something that, that got passed this evening, which was um, the health care policy for the city. Um, unfortunately, there was no opportunity to have any discussion to find out what the numbers are. Um, $875,000 is eight and three quarter percent of the city's operating budget. It's a big chunk of change. Uh, I'm a business owner. I too use Medical Mutual because they were the most cost effective from when you rolled in cozy small uh, enterprises uh, coverage. But there is also, every year, I get a big packet of all the different offerings from what level of coverage you have. And each one has its own associated cost. Um, some more than others. Uh, they all depend on things like deductibles and how much employee contribution there is, whether there's prescription benefits, et cetera. And I, as a taxpayer, would like to know what the city decided on for its employees without any input from the people who are paying for it. So if I could ask, could the city put together a simple one page, this is the coverage that we're giving our employees? We were, we were late in getting that uh, exhibit to the, uh, to, to uh, attach to the resolution. We did get it attached. Uh, I, it will be posted. So it'll be on the website. Um, so all the terms on that. But I asked when and, and where on the website? Because the website is very difficult to navigate. Hmm. Uh, 
Yeah. Are the exhibits yeah. included with the ordinance? Yeah, they're included with the yeah. ordinance. So under under ordinances on the on the left hand side, one of the tabs going down is his ordinance, and uh, it should be posted on there. And, and it clearly shows what uh, for the family deductible per person deductible employee yes. contribution benefits and all that. Yes. Okay. Very good. Uh, and one last thing on the on the website. <laughs> Sorry. Again, it's kind of difficult in a sense. Again, something got voted on and approved uh, this evening. Um, as far as insight development goes, there is still a final PDF of the city's development plan on the city's website under New Franklin Businesses that still shows very clearly on page on two different pages high density housing. So, if that, as we've been assured, is not the case, could that plan either be revised or an addendum put up there? That in fact shows that that is the case, because there's nothing there at at this point in writing that says that. Yeah, I know that I know that we put some responses on there, like about four dozen, uh, over the period of time. So we we tried to explain that a number of times. And I, I, I understand that, but yet the plan couldn't, couldn't grasp it. No matter how many times we explained the it. document is still on the but, city's website as a final. No, Mark, plan. I know I don't mean to be quarrelsome. I, that even, document, I think, of what you're referring to was part of that presentation that was made uh, in, in two places. One was, was to the Ohio EDA, uh, and then also when we made a presentation to the property owners, we invited the property owners from State Route 93, we invited the stakeholders, ministers, the uh, school superintendent, and we invited the business owners uh, to share with them what was up with the water and the sewer. Yeah, I understand all that. As a preliminary, in fact, we stated very clearly on there that we were coming to them prior to going to any developers or investors. So it's there as a historical document, okay? Uh, I, I don't know if I feel comfortable taking it down well, because okay. someone might suggest that we're, we're, we're trying to change history. Oh, so, well, no. But, I, but I, 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 on the same token, Mark, I have explained, I, and, and I posted uh, and I believe that's still on the website, but I'll have to check. Well, on the website, when it first really came up, an, ex an explanation. Uh, so again, I uh, uh, I can post another explanation, or I can pull the one that I posted back, I think, in March of of uh, this year. Hey, uh, Judge, the, the explanation said that there are no current plans for rezoning anything. Well, it, it, it was more thorough than that. Um, but that was the general gist of it. Yet the document is still sitting there. Do you feel I should take the document no, down? No, no. I think well, what the city should do is say this was presented at such and right. such, and I'll the city's again. position is that what's on pages such and right. such and such and shows high density housing is no longer okay. in the specific plans. I'll, at I'll this be time. happy to, to say it as many times as people need to hear. I would appreciate it. All right. I got people that it actually affects it that are business owners there that once it was on, you know, explained to them one time, they, they, they're fine with that. You know, so and we've talked about it so many times. And I have not heard after the, the initial discussion months ago, I have not gotten one other comment on it. So but I think it's just tough to because do that, just to, uh, you know, take care of it. Plug is cheap. Yeah, I think it's tough because when you look on the Plug website, cheap, there it is, is and it says cheap, final right? and you know, and then we see this contract being renewed, renewed with again. the people who put that together and we're going I know he said that the high wasn't happening. That's fine. But it's still there. Yeah. It's still there. All right. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have a question about the tennis courts that are going in. It, it's tennis courts and parking lot. Pickleball courts as well. Um, who's going to own that? The city. Who's going to maintain that? The city. Which department? Well, it would probably come out of parks and Rec. Can they afford to do that, seeing that their budget is going to be cut at this fifty thousand dollars a year until it's paid off? Uh, yes. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Um, pairing that down from a nine hundred thousand dollar original bid for the tennis courts down to seven hundred fifty would be a fee, with uh, rising material costs and labor costs are skyrocketing at this point. Uh, one way that I might suggest you deal with not 30 to 50,000 off that right at the top would be moved to a lot that is not filled with trees. If you try to cut those trees down, pull the stumps up, regrade everything, it's going to cost considerably more and if you pay a road crew to do that, it'll end up being 
uh, offset to another department, maybe appearing to not be part of the final budget on the, the bill, but spending $750,000 on the contractor and then $100,000 in, in additional repair or additional uh, site prep will not be beneficial to the taxpayer. It will still cost the same dollar amount either way. So we'll we'll find out when all the new bidding comes in and what the new plan is. You agree, sir. And I'll just, just because it's we're talking about, it, if they don't come in where it's going to happen, then it might not happen right now. So that's a, that's the story on that. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Executive session, Paul. No. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All favor. Aye. 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 Let's have it. Next council meeting, December fifteenth. We'll start the meetings at six and go right into our. No, 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 no,